Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, who wants to hear about ghosts? Ooh. So before I go in there about what ghosts are in my house, first of all, I want to show you my t-shirt that I, wore, I wear. I got this one probably about 10 years ago. And whenever I do ghost investigations or I go out on group haunting nights or go to the cemeteries or wherever, I like to wear this shirt. Why do paranormalists wear black because we want to stay dark okay when you're out at a site and there's heaps of people filming you don't want bright colors everywhere so i think that's why it is because they associate black with do 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 okay all right so this shirt as you can see it's my ghost augustine carpe noctum that means seize the night okay now the the group that it's from which is augustine they operate out of Florida in the USA, right? St. Um, Augustine's. On the back, I love this shirt, okay? On the back, America's, America's Most Haunted. Okay, so I love my shirt. So, yeah, sometimes we have to get um, dressed up for what we're doing, right? Okay, just readjust my hair. Okay, so the next thing I want to go into I've got ghosts in my house. A lot of people have seen the ghosts in my house. They've heard the ghosts in the house. They've heard the knocks, the bangs, the walking that people do in my house. So before I go into that, I want to explain what is a ghost. Ghosts are those who stay earthbound. They don't go to heaven, so they stay earthbound. And I'm currently updating my book, Ghosts and Spirits. And that's going to be hopefully available in about another month because I get distracted and I get self-sabotaging like, and other things going on in my life where I just don't get time to concentrate and add up this, um, to update this book, okay? So it is coming. So that book, Ghosts and Spirits, will be explaining why ghosts stay, why spirits go to heaven and what they both can and can't do. And there's also questions in there Questions that um, we can ask them, questions that we should never ask them, and also questions they ask us. It's going to be a good book, guys. Okay, stay tuned for that one. So, ghosts are the ones who stay earthbound. When I moved into this house seven odd years ago, um, it was pretty apparent from the get-go, I think it was day two, I saw a little boy. I didn't see all of him because what he'd do is he'd stand behind a, a doorway. I'm just grabbing a book here. So he'd be behind the doorway and then he'd do that. He'd creep out. So you wouldn't see him, just his head coming around the corner. So I saw him in the dining room. I saw him in the kitchen. He was behind my fridge one day and he looked out around the fridge my daughter saw him a lot of times as well Tashi actually called him Andy so one day Tashi's out in the backyard digging like she does you know she likes gardening etc and she's digging this hole and she finds this little it's it's a little plastic Dalmatian and underneath it um it had the letter A on it so Tashi called this boy Andy you know like in the Toy Story right the A on the boot, right, Andy. So we had this little Dalmatian in the house for a couple of years. Then I started a meetup group called Southside Psychics. When I had that group, I used to do a lot of development classes here, people coming over to learn psychometry, learn how to be a medium, um, learn how to connect with cards, um, self-awareness exercises meditation nights I used to have it all running here um, then COVID hit and ultimately I just shut it all down but this man came here one night and he said I can do psychometry which is when we touch an item and we get imprints off the item okay so he was here and Tashi came out with this little Dalmatian dog and it sort of reminded me of one of those toys that you get in a McDonald's Happy Pack, right? You know, the little dogs that they have. 
So it probably was when the um, 101 Dalmatians came out, whenever that was. Um, so anyway, Tashi gave this to this man that was in my house and he started getting all this information about my boy ghost. Great. So he said, look, I want to go down and have a chat with him. I said, yep, off you go, down to Tashi's room. Um, when I moved in here, Tashi's room was virtually a no-go zone. The energy in there was horrible. Um, you'd walk in and it's like you're standing in a tornado where the energy is just going woo, 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 and you'd come out feeling nauseous, you'd come out feeling dizzy. Okay, I cleansed it. I called in the archangels. I did a lot of um, cleansing in that room, okay? It's Tashi's bedroom. So this man went in and he had a chat with this boy. And... When he came out, he said, oh, this boy's now just passed over. I've helped him move over. And I went, thank you so much. You know, I hope that you did it respectfully and um, you didn't force him to leave. But he said, this boy died in the house. So I'd heard rumours, but I wanted to confirm it. So I went around the neighbourhood door knocking and I was talking to the neighbours who were here before I moved in. You know, the, the ones that were here longer than me being here. And funny thing, because I was talking to neighbours who don't talk to other neighbours, what I established was there was a murder in this house. 12-year-old boy got killed by his mother. Now I understand why this boy in the house... He was, he was never active with me. He was very scared of me, hence him coming out and just peering around because he's scared, okay? So that little boy who we called Andy is no longer in my house, but he was very, very active for the first two or three years that I lived here. So who do I have here now? Funny thing, I've got a few. So let's go through the ones that I've got here now. One is a man called Terry. Terry came here one night with another man um, for a development course. Terry just was attached to him and following him around, sort of like the Shelley that came here, okay? So Terry came here and he sat in my lounge. <laughs> I've got a couple of um, one-seater chairs. So he threw his leg up over the side like this. And he's sitting there, oh yeah, yeah, I was out on this trawler one night. And oh, the swearing and the jokes was constant for about two hours when Terry came here. Terry died of emphysema in the early 70s and he used to smoke drum cigarettes. He told me all this because when he sat in front of me, it was like me right now in front of you watching me. That is how apparent he was. So... Terry, he's a jokester, He very proud of how he died and he also lets me know when he's here because I smell his drum cigarettes, okay? So I've got Terry. Then I've acquired a little dog. Now, when, <laughs> when I first saw this dog, my cat Mary went nuts. She's sort of used to him now. But this dog, um, he usually plays around my dining room table and out towards my back door. I'm down in the bedroom area, by the way. This is the bedroom that I'm in now, my office. And this dog, when you see it running through, you never see his head or his front paws. It's generally from the mid-torso, so you see his back legs and his tail sticking up in the air. So a lot of... Ugh, I'll go more than 20 people have seen this dog in my house where they see it running and all you see is the tail very prominently where this dog's running around inside my house. So I've got a dog. Then I've also got a little girl here. I went over to, um, sorry, start again. A friend of mine moved into a new house and it was only a few weeks after they moved in. They rang me up and said, Linda, we've got a ghost here. We don't like it. Come over and get rid of it. So I went over to their house, which is only about a five minute drive from me. And I said, 
what is it that you've got here? And they said, it's a little girl. We wake up in the middle of the night. She's standing at the end of my bed. Wow, okay. So I went into their bedroom. Instantly I saw her. She was standing there like right now. You know, this this physical. So I sat on the end of the bed and I said, Hello, darling. My name's Linda. What's your name? And she looked down and she's like rolling her eyes left and back and forward. She she didn't know her name. And I said, Are you okay, baby cakes? And she looked up at me and she said, Where's Dave? And I said, I don't know a Dave. I don't know. So I said to her, are you happy here? And she said, I want Dave. I said, well, darling, I don't know a Dave, but if you like, you can come home with me and I've got a little girl that you can play with. So this little girl came home with me that night and before I left the house, I went out to my friends. They were married, by the way. And um, I said to them, who's Dave? And they said, we don't know. You know, we've only been here a few weeks. Um, but in the cupboard, there's one of the old leases. So they found this old lease in the house. And guess who was the previous tenant? A guy called Dave. So she liked Dave for whatever reason, this little girl. She's only about three, and it is funny because sometimes she changes her dress. So some days she's in a pink dress. Other times I've seen her in a yellow dress with all little flowers all over it. Other time I've seen her in her pajamas. So they can change their clothes, okay? Sometimes she has two little plaits on the side of her head. It's so cute. You know, she's only about three, and she's got these little tiny short plaits in her hair. Other times it's out. You know, it's beautiful, this little girl. She means me no harm, so she's welcome to stay here. I talk to her every now and again. Hey, little one. I call her Baby Cakes, okay? Baby Cakes, where are you, darling cake? You know, do you want to come out and play? So I put trigger items around the house. So little teddy bears, old toys of Tashies, I put them out. So if she does want to play with anything through the day, she's quite welcome to. Because she's welcome here to make her feel safe and secure. Because she's stuck here. She doesn't know what happened to her. I don't know what happened to her, so I can't tell her what happened to her. Um, so she's here. Little girl. Only about three, four years old at the very most. Okay. So we've got Terry, the little girl, and a dog. But that's not all. I sometimes tell my friends I need one of those neon flashing lights on my doorway that says short term accommodation because some days my house is a revolving doorway of ghosts coming in and out. It's like ding 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 there's a radar on top of my head if there's a ghost in the area go and see Linda because why do they attract to me? It's because I can see them. They come to me because I make that eye contact with them. Okay? That's why they, they're happy to come to me. So let's go there with this guy that came here with Shelley. Who's read my book, Ghost Exposed? Ghost Exposed, my book about ghosts, that's the one I'm updating now, putting in a lot more ghost stories, a lot more spirit stories, scientific reasoning as well as psychological aspects as to why ghosts and spirits come through and give us messages and why they move things around. So, Shelley, man rang me one night and he said, Linda, I've been over to Fraser Island, which is an island off the Queensland coastline. He said, I've been to Queen, um, over to Fraser for the weekend and when I came back on Sunday night, I got in my car and it was like someone was sitting in the passenger seat. Do you mind if I come straight to your house? Now, this was about 8 o'clock on Sunday night and he was about an hour and a half drive away. And I said, mate, sorry, it's getting too late. You know, I've got to get my daughter to bed, blah, blah, blah. You know, school tomorrow. Can you come tomorrow after work? So when he turned up the next afternoon, it was about six o'clock. Not only did I see him in the car, but Shelley was sitting in the front seat. 
So I've walked away thinking, okay, two people are coming into the house. Is the house looking all right? You know, have I got the kettle on because they may want a coffee, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> so I opened the door and this man was standing there and Shelley was standing behind him. So I've gestured to both of them, come on in. And he sat in my lounge room and he, I said, what's going on? Shelley was standing behind his chair near the front door. And I said, what's going on? And he said, well, I rang you last night because all the way coming home from Fraser Island, it's like someone's standing right next to me. And he said, I got home and I walked into my house and it's like someone's in the living room. So then I went to bed and it was like someone's standing next to my bed. And I'm just looking at the Shelly girl behind him thinking, is he going to introduce me to this other woman? Because, again, she was as prominent as me sitting here right in front of you now watching. If you listen to my voice, that's how she spoke. Okay? Very, very prominent. So, he said he went to work on the Monday. And even when he got to work, it was like someone standing right next to his desk. He's got his own office. He's an accountant. So, he's got his own office where he can close the door. And he said it was like someone was in my office all day with me. And even driving here, it was like someone was in the front seat. And I'm just having this snigger at him because when he pulled up, I saw her sitting in the front seat, right? So I looked at her and I said, what's your name? And they give me this look. They give me this look, ghosts. They look around and they're looking all around. But when they see me, they do this. They... It's the eye pop. So they, they make eye contact. They make eye contact and it's like, oh my God, you can see me. So that's what Shelley did. She looked, you know, she's looking all around my house, just looking at what I've got in my house. And when she looks at, looked at me, she went, she gave me this, oh, what I call the stunned mullet look. <laughs> stunned mullet. That's a term from the 80s if you know fishing with mullet. Okay, because I used to do a lot of fishing back in the 80s. Okay, a stunned mullet look. So I said to her, what's your name? I heard her say, Shelley. But this man thought I was talking to him. And he said, Linda, you know my name. I've, I've spoken to you on the phone and, you know, I'm here now. I said, mate, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Shelley. And he said, who, where? And she's standing right beside him, by the way. And he's looking like this. So I looked back at Shelley and I said, would you like to stay here and have a chat with me? And she looked at me and she said, yes, I would. So I looked back at this guy and I said, well, Shelley's going to stay here with me now. If you want, you can go. So he was only in my house for about 10 minutes. And as he was leaving, because Shelley was still in my lounge room at this point, living room, I said to him, if you still have this feeling after tonight, please ring me back. Now, that would have been probably four years ago he's never rung me back because Shelley stayed with me that night so let me go into who Shelley is Shelley was a young girl probably 17 and she died in the late 70s I said to her what do you remember and she said are you able to take me to the hospital and I said mm, why and she said now ironically because it's another Dave okay I need to find out how Dave is. And I said, what happened to Dave? Now, she got very, very angry, very, very short with me. So what I did is I pulled out pens and paper, and I also started my phone because I record everything on my phone. And I started a video. So as I'm talking to her, I was, I was recording the questions that I was asking, but I didn't receive any EMFs from her electronic um evps electronic voice phenomena right her voice didn't come through on the recording so all you hear is me talking okay so i ended up getting because shelly stayed here for three days i ended up getting out a pen and paper and i was sitting there with my pen and paper writing down all the questions that i was going to ask her and then as she spoke i was filling in her answers so i had very very concise um, questions and answers that she answered. So Shelley 
wanted to go to the hospital because of Dave. So I asked her, what do you remember? And she said to me, oh my God, we were going to Fraser Island. Hang on, isn't that where the guy had been for the weekend? And it was when he came back from Fraser Island that he f- was feeling her around him? Do, 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 right? Yes. So I said to Shelley, what do you remember? She said, we're on our way to Fraser. We're running late for the ferry because there's no bridge over to Fraser Island. You've got to catch a ferry. And I think it was used to leave at like 7 o'clock at night or whatever it was, right? So, and I said to her, well, what happened? What do you remember? Go back to being in the car. What do you remember? And she said, we're driving fast. Dave's in the front seat. He's driving. I'm sitting behind Dave in the back seat. I said, yes, okay. And I said, what do you remember happened? And she said, it was raining and it's dark. And they were speeding. Now, back in the 70s, the road that they were on was a dirt road. You know where this is leading, right? She remembered the car rolling. And then instantly, she's standing beside Dave. And there's a paramedic there with an ambulance. And they're putting Dave on a, tro- on a stretcher to load him into the ambulance. She said to me, I don't understand why they weren't talking to me. And then she ended up sitting at my dining room table, because I'm still asking her, like she stayed here for three days. She sat at my dining room table. Now, if you know a dining room table with the chairs, she had her knees up under the table and she's holding her knees like this and she's rocking like this. Now, if you know body language, this is someone who's very traumatized. This is someone scared. This is someone totally frustrated. They don't understand. They're confused. Okay? So her body language was very apparent. She's rocking with her knees and she says, you don't understand. I've got to get to the ambulance. I've got to get go to the hospital. I said, which hospital did he go to? I don't know, she said. I don't know where hospital he went to. They wouldn't tell me. They wouldn't take me in the ambulance with him. Sorry, I do get emotional, you know, because this poor girl didn't know that she was dead. She didn't know what happened to her. She couldn't understand why all these people were there, were helping Dave and not her. So I said to her, how long after the car rolled were the people there? And she said, it was instant, instant. I said, darling, back in the 70s, you were on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. Someone would have had to have come past... Then it was like an hour drive to get to the nearest phone. And then it would have been at least an hour, hour and a half for the ambulances and the police to come back. She said, no, 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 it's instant, it's instant. So I ended up saying to Shelley, what year is it? And I'm pretty sure it was 1978. I said, Shelley, it's not 1970s anymore, it's 2000. I think it was 2019. So it would have been about three years ago, Shelley came here. It's all in my book, okay? I should have checked all this for the dates before I got online, right? But I know that whenever I talk about Shelley, I do get quite upset because she was so confused, so scared. She was only 17 years old when she perished in a car accident so heartbreaking so I ended up getting out a calendar and I showed her the calendar 2019 on it she said no no don't believe it no she could not fathom the time I said darling do you know what this is and I picked up my phone I said do you know what this is this is a phone she said no 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 because you know she knows the the old ring, you know, you got to put your fo- the holes and you dial it with the cord. She could not understand these. So I even pulled out my laptop and I said, do you know what this is? And she went, wow, no, what's that? Because she was here for three days, so she was just really intrigued by our technology that we have now. You know, 
40 odd years after her own death so ultimately I um, opened up a portal in my dining room because I've got a huge portal in there and she could see it I'll do a video one day on my portals okay so I, I'm showing her this portal on my wall in the living room and I said Dallin you've got two choices one you can go through that portal there's a good chance Dave's in there your mum and dad are in there or you've got the front door because you can't stay here anymore because she was she was pretty um, abusive I'll, I'll say that she was pretty abusive yeah so I was hoping that she'd go through the portal and go home like the little boy did that was in my house when I moved in she's looking into this portal and Wow. She stands up. I thought, great, she's going in, she's going in. She walks straight back out into the living room, walks through my front door. She walked through the front door <coughs> because it was closed. She didn't even open it. She just walked through it. So I've come around and I've opened the door because hello, I can't walk through a wall, right? <laughs> Open the front door. And there she is in my front yard, near the gutter. She's looking left. She's looking across the road. She's looking to the right. And she starts casually walking down the, my street. So I went out to the gutter and I looked down the street and I watched her walking. She's looking across the road, looking into other houses. She's looking on this side of the road and she's looking into houses. She's on a relentless search to find someone to take her to a hospital. Now there's about five major hospitals that he could have gone to. Would he still be there? But in her own mind, that perception that she's got she's still stuck on that day she died she couldn't remember anything from the past 40 odd years it was all now it just happened this car accident so Shelley's been in my house I've got this lovely old ghost lady <laughs> funny thing I've got a back shed and <laughs> I had a party here one night and one of the guys that was here was Rick Burden. He is the admin of a Facebook group called Ghost Hunters of Australia. Rick Burden was here with, oh, there was about 15 other people. We're all sitting in my backyard and out comes the ghost from behind my shed. <laughs> so I call her the shed, the shed grandma, right? She's my shed grandma. She's in, like, if you know the 1960s where ladies used to wear like a cotton short sleeve nighty and then they'd have the matching cotton gown over the top that used to button up she's got one of those on and her hair's in rollers right so she's got curlers in her hair <clears throat> she comes out from behind my shed <laughs> and she just stands there she doesn't come over and interact she just stands there and watches us so this night, all these people in my backyard, Rick Burden looks up and he says, because Rick is a medium as well, right? He sees them. Rick looks up and he says, Linda, who's the lady next to the shed? And I looked over and I went, yep, that's her. I've told you about her, Ricky. You know, that's the lady <laughs> in a gown with a nightie. Hair's, hair is in her in a rollers. And Rick looks at her and he says, it's funny you don't believe in ghosts but you are one <laughs> and she does this <laughs> turns around and walks back behind the shed <laughs> everyone's just looking at Rick like who are you talking to <laughs> I knew because <laughs> I see them too oh my god <laughs> then we've got this guy he runs through my backyard <laughs> He wears a red flannel, you know, like a lumberjack, 
flannel shirt, the long sleeve flannel shirts with like the crisscrosses on them, the make squares type things. He's wearing those with a pair of jeans and he runs from, he runs through the fence. He doesn't jump the fence, he runs through the fence, right? And he comes through my back fence and he runs through my backyard and he just runs straight through the side fence here that leads into Roy's house. So again, Rick was here one night. <laughs> Because Rick and I are pretty good friends, right? And Rick's sitting out the back and he says, Linda, I just saw your man. <laughs> and I said, good, I'm not the only one. <clears throat> you know, and that night some people saw the dog here as well and the little girl were here. <laughs> it was all a big party. <laughs> they all come out and play. So Rick came over this Christmas um, a few years back and he stopped at the end of my street where there's all this bush and um, he was it was for a Christmas party and Rick was getting on his Santa suit so he turned up in a Santa suit and while he was standing there in his well he was standing next to his car this guy came out of the bush the same one wearing the flannel lot like a lumberjack t-shirt thing and he comes out and Rick just knew that this guy had been hung down in the back field so Rick turns up and he says Linda you wouldn't believe who I just saw I said, yep. I had a feeling too because he keeps running. He's running away from somebody. So, you know, we, we believe that he was murdered by somebody down the back, okay? Um, well, you know, there's only a few real ways of how we can die, isn't it? Natural causes, self-inflicted or somebody else, right? So, um, <coughs> <coughs> you know, it is very daunting talking about ghosts. So I've, I do have to be careful, you know, because people could be triggered. People could, you know, they don't just see the light of it like I sort of do. So please know, guys, I am available to talk to anyone who has issues with death, okay, because I've dealt with it a lot. Um, hello, I even died, <laughs> 2001, right? Um, so please know if you want to reach out and talk to me about it, please do. If it is something that you're struggling with, with the, like mental health, depression, PTSD, etc., please go and see a doctor and talk to them, okay? Medical doctor I'm referring to, okay? I'm a doctor because I've got a PhD. Um, totally different, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's the guy who runs through my backyard. Then we've got the little jokesters who don't let me know who they are. So, um, last night I was here alone because Tashi was with, with her dad. And I want to let you know how often this happens. Just last night, I was sitting in my lounge room. And it's only about three foot away that it goes into like wood flooring. So I'm sitting there last night watching Captain America. Chris Evans, yep, I can watch him all night. So I'm sitting there watching Chris Evans playing as a Captain America. And I could hear someone walking around in my kitchen. Heel toe. You know, as you put your heel toe makes two different noises heel toe so I'll just try and replicate it as someone's walking around in my in my kitchen so I stood up which is my kitchen's only about five feet from where I sit no one's in the house but then just outside my back window it was quite large it was bigger than a dog so I'll say it's human and it was sort of like a dragging sound so I've gone over to my door and I've turned on lights thinking oh my god there's someone it's bigger than a dog so just last night I had someone walking around in my kitchen and I had someone walking around on my back veranda very very loud it was okay um yeah I've done a couple of videos where over the past couple of weeks things happen one time the door opened if you saw, saw that video when my door opened um mary's a cat she lives here but she's outside all day um she only comes in at night time to sleep or if she comes in for a day sleep so she doesn't move around so someone opened my door in a video and in another video i did i actually said ghost interruption um my front door is always locked and shut whenever I do my videos so if someone knocks it's just no one's home right <laughs> I'm in here videoing hello so my door was locked and closed I heard the door open and then bang 
it slammed. It slammed shut again. So who the heck did that one? you got to remember here, guys, I do make a joke that I've got this revolving sign on my house that says short-term accommodation, right? Because I'm pretty sure at any given time, one night I was sitting there watching TV and I could count eight sets of footprints walking around in my dining room. Eight. That's when I stopped because that's all I could count. Heel toe, heel toe, and I'm thinking, yep, that's one person. But then you've got another set, then another set. And I was actually sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, how many people are walking around in my dining room right now? So I do have rules in my house. One of those is you're not allowed in my bedroom. My bedroom is my sanctuary. It's my cave. You are not allowed in my bedroom at all. So they respect that one. They also respect that um, nothing is to be thrown at me. Because I have had things thrown at me before, including a car engine. That was a nice night. A car engine. You imagine how much that weighs, right? So that wasn't at my house, though. That was at somewhere else. Um, <laughs> car engine thrown at me. That was fun. Um, three people saw it, too, by the way. Good stuff. Actually, two. Two plus me, so it was three. Um, so they're not allowed to throw things at me, but they are allowed to move things past me so I see it move thank you okay that sort of stuff and I always give thanks I always say wow that's so good that you could do that I encourage it I let them know that they are safe here I let them know that they are welcome here as long as they don't break my rules they don't hurt me they're not allowed to disrespect me most of all if they're negative or disrespectful I get them to move on okay so um yeah how many ghosts do I have here? A lot. More than I know. Okay. Um, just this afternoon, so it's now coming up to four o'clock. About an hour or so ago, I was talking to the lovely Anna Knapp, who lives in Wisconsin, USA. Hello, Anna. I know you'll watch this one. And as I'm talking to her, I said to her, I'm going to go outside to have a coffee. And as I'm opening up my screen door, I heard bang in my kitchen. So I went over with Anna still on, because we were doing a video call on um, Facebook Messenger so we can see each other, right? And I'm moving everything to replicate the noise of what I heard. And it was my saucepan. Now that saucepan lives on the hot plate because I just get too bored. To, I, I'm just too lazy to put it in the cupboard every, so I have to drag it out all the time. So I just leave it on the hot plates. And that saucepan has been there since Friday. So I haven't moved that saucepan since Friday. So it's not like it was off balance. It's not like the lid wasn't on properly. So it's moving to adjust its weight. Because it's been there now for over two days. But when I heard it, it was like it lifted and then dropped. Okay. So, yeah. Had activity last night and then just today, the saucepan moved in my, cup, in my kitchen. So I have a little chat with them. And I say, who is this? Please be kind and respectful. If you do wish to come through and identify yourself, I'd love to know who you are. My name is Linda. I mean you no harm. I mean you no disrespect. You're welcome to stay in my house as long as you wish, as long as you're kind, respectful, and that you would um, obey my rules of the house because it's my house, my rules, right? So that's what I always say to them. See how it just rattles off my head. So there you go, guys. Stuff happens in my house every day. I love it. Especially when I'm wearing my ghost t-shirt. Hope you've enjoyed these stories because I've got some more. My book's coming out in about another month. So stay tuned because I'll certainly do, be doing ex excerpts out of that one. Okay. So I hope that you've liked this little information about the ghosts in my house tonight. Okay. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.